Hey folks, this is Sez from Hasura. I'm going to tell you about adding Relay support to Hasura. First, I'm going to tell you about Relay, and then I'm going to tell you how to use Relay and Hasura together. So you know that feeling when you're working really hard on a project and then you finish coding and you run your code and you find there's no bugs. Everything's running perfectly. You've written perfect code. Of course, I'm just kidding. This never happens to anybody. For this to happen to you, you would have to be a unicorn. And everybody knows that unicorns don't exist. They're mythological creatures. If you think you're a unicorn, you do you, boo. Narwhals, on the other hand, do exist, even though they look totally made up. They're out there. And just like everything that's real, they're imperfect. So let's just say we're all narwhals. We all make mistakes. So what does all of this have to do with Relay and Hasura? Well, Relay is a JavaScript framework for declaratively fetching and managing GraphQL data. And Relay knows that we all make mistakes and actually sets us up for success with strict conventions. Mm. What are the ways that Relay saves us from uh, failing? One is minimizing developer errors, and the other is maximizing performance. And for both of these things, Relay uses the Relay compiler, which is the star of the show, and it's really quite magical, actually. It's a composer of sorts. It composes GraphQL fragments. And what does this mean? Well, just like uh, components are composed into a tree in React, Relay was also made by Facebook, so it's a similar mental model. And in Relay, data fragments are composed into a query. This is so that we can reduce run trips to the server because the compiler can maximize our efficiency. So if you don't know what a fragment is, I can tell you right now, it's a selection of fields on a GraphQL type. And it looks like this. It, here is a album fragment on type album, and we're selecting the field's name, genre, and the names of the tracks. This allows us to split a query into reusable fragments. In Relay, this is how you would do that. This is an album detail component, and it's showing its fragment, and it's showing its view, and they're both inside the same component. This is called collocation. This means that data definitions and view definitions live together. So we have the data fragment and the view inside the same component. Collocation has a bunch of benefits. First of all, we're declaring exactly what data we need, which is makes it hard to overfetch or underfetch data. Not overfetching improves performance because you're not getting more than you need. And not underfetching prevents errors from missing data. Also, components can only access data that they've asked for. This is called data masking, and this prevents implicit data dependency bugs because components can't rely on other components for their data. Also, components only re-render when the exact data they're using is updated. This prevents unnecessary re-renders. So all in all, collocation makes our code more modular, easier to refactor, more performant, and less error prone. So Relay Compiler does a bunch of other cool things. One of these is automatic type generation. By default, they're flow types, but if you wanted, you could also go with TypeScript. And with the flow types, if you want to see what that looks like, here's an example. I'm importing the type, which is auto-generated by the Relay compiler, and I'm checking my props against this type, which I'm passing into my component. Types are great because type safety prevents bugs. So I recommend it. Relay compiler goes further it actually transforms your queries into shorter strings. It optimizes them by removing redundancies and flattening them. This reduces the query payload size because now we have shorter strings. And 
This is great for performance. Speaking of shorter strings, you can also enable persistent queries. When you run the relay compiler, you can use the uh, persist output flag. And when this is enabled, your GraphQL operations will be converted into MD5 hashes. So MD5 hashes make our strings shorter. This reduces query payload size even more. What? And not only that, but you can now whitelist queries because now these MD5 hashes can define queries that your clients are restricted to use. So this improves security. So this is the whirlwind tour of Relay's benefits on the client side. But what about the server side? This is where Hasura comes in. Relay has a server spec that is very specific. So if you're not using Hasura, you have to implement it manually. And the first thing is the node interface. This means that the server must implement an interface named node, and it must have a field named ID, and this ID must be globally unique. This is so that Relay can refetch the data using this ID, because the server must also implement a root level field called node, which takes in the ID and gives you a type that implements the node interface. So this is great for performance on the client side, but on the server side, it's actually kind of a pain to implement because you have to make sure that the IDs are globally unique. You have to make sure you can get the objects with the IDs. So if you use Hasura, you don't have to implement this backend because Hasura auto-generates this backend for you, which I'm going to show you in a second in my demo. The other thing with the server spec is connections. Connections are Relay's way of standardizing pagination. So in Relay, you might have a query like this where you're getting the albums of an artist, you get the first two, and there's a bunch of pagination info in there, like the cursors and whether there's a next page. Um, but Relay actually keeps track of the cursors and merging the results and loading states and everything. So you don't actually have to keep track of that on the client side, but on the server side, you still have to implement this. So dun 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 with Hasura, you don't have to implement this on the server side because Hasura auto generates this backend for you again. So let me show you now how to use Hasura and Relay together. Here's my GraphQL endpoint that I would normally use with uh, if I'm using like Apollo client or something. And here is my schema that is auto-generated by Hasura from my database, which has restaurants and reviews. It has a one-to-many relationship. So one restaurant has many reviews. And normally you would go like restaurant, name, reviews, body, you can get the list of restaurants and a bunch of reviews. Now, if you look up here, what is this? <laughs> There's a toggle here. You can enable the Relay API. And now the endpoint has changed. So if you're using Relay, you would use this endpoint. And down here, we have the Relay compliant schema. So we have the node root field and we have the connections on restaurants and reviews, so we can paginate them. Inside the connection, there's information about the pagination, like I want the first 10 restaurants or something, and page info. So if I were manually paginating, I would get this end cursor, and then I would say after that cursor to get the next page. But as we said before, Relay keeps track of the cursor for you, so you don't actually have to do that. And then let me show you an example here. So edges, node, this is the field on the restaurant. And you can get the reviews like we did before, or you can get the reviews connection. If you want to paginate them, <clears throat> 
edges, node, body of the reviews. So let's run this and see what happens. We get our restaurants and we get the reviews on the restaurants in a format that we can paginate. And if you also notice, there's an analyze button here. Hasura is actually converting our GraphQL query into a uh, efficient SQL query. So our query is even further optimized by Hasura here. Cool. So let's me show you my app that I made just for demo purposes. So here's a restaurant and here are the list of reviews. Here is the load more button, it gets me three more reviews and I can keep clicking until there's no more reviews and the button disappears. And the code for this looks like this and I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I'm gonna show you uh, fragments and I'm gonna show you pagination. So here we go. This is my root query where I'm getting the restaurant by its ID. It's got the name and the cuisine, and I'm also including the fragment here for my reviews. This object here is the fragment reference that this fragment can get its data from. So this restaurant fragment reference, it's called a fragment reference by Relay. So down here in the reviews component, I'm passing my fragment reference so it knows where to get its data from. And then in the reviews component, I'm calling, because I want to paginate my reviews, I'm calling use pagination fragment, which comes from Relay. And it returns a bunch of functions that are super convenient, like load next for when you click the load more button, has next a Boolean for hiding the button if there's no more reviews, is loading next another Boolean for showing a loading text on the button. And then here's my fragment. It's taking a bunch of arguments because you can pass arguments into fragments in Relay. So it's taking cursor and first. Then we have the refetchable directive. This is so that you don't have to run the restaurant query. This auto generates a smaller query for you for when you just want to get the pagination data. And then finally, here is my actual connection with the fields on it. And here I am rendering my list. And here is my button. Has next, if there's no more reviews, I hide the button. On click, I load the next three reviews. It's disabled if we're loading and it's showing loading text. So there we go. There is my little demo of Relay and Hasura. If you want to try it out and if you have any questions or feedback, you can just go to our homepage, hasura.io and find our links to Discord and Twitter. And let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much.